Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is so good to have you here. In this episode, I am going to go over some of the table names that revolve around users, groups, roles, and the relationships between them. The reason you wanna know these table names is it's gonna make navigating to these tables way more easier than what's provided for you out of the box. First up, the user table. And this table is named sys underscore user. Now, why is it so handy that you know that table name? Well, if you go to your navigator bar and type in user, you get a stupendous amount of results. Which one of these links in your navigator bar that says user in it is actually the list of users that you wanna look at? So, because the navigator bar is so complex, we are gonna use the table name and a navigator bar hack to get to the user list. So we're gonna type in sysuser.list. We're gonna type list in capital letters. That's gonna open it up in a new tab. And here we have the list of users. Now, if you're new to ServiceNow, I want to really encourage you to use your show XML here. So I have a user, I'm going to right click show XML. And this is a list of properties on the user table, whether or not they show up on the form. If you want to know more about show XML, I did a video on it. That's going to be coming up in the corner. Keep your eyes peeled for it. Would love to see you watch that video. Another reason you want to know the user table name is if you're ever building a report on the user table and you type in user, again, you get this gigantic list because there's so many tables that have the word user in it. Uh, you don't even get the full list. It just has to load more results. And in fact, um, on a PDI, this can literally take you minutes. So we're gonna show you a little hack here. We're gonna go sys user. That will radically reduce the number. So we have a much more abbreviated list, but we can even get better because in reporting, it searches for the little square brackets as well. So I'm gonna put a square bracket at the end of that and we're down to just a couple results. So I can click this user and there I'm reporting on a title. When you're actually building a report, that can take seconds instead of lots of seconds. It's also critical to know the table name here in case you are dealing with any scripts that have to create, modify, or delete user records. You're gonna to need to know that table name. Okay, the next obvious topic is groups. And why would we wanna know the table name for groups? Well, again, if you go to your navigator bar and you type in group, you get an enormous scrolling list in which the word group is featured, but you don't want a list of options. You just wanna to go to the darn group table. So the name of the group table is sys user group. And again, we'll use our hack to do dot list. In 15 years of doing this, I think at least 10,000 times I've written it as sys user groups. Uh, so a nice hack to be better than me instantaneously is to remember that table names are almost always the singular of the noun. Group instead of groups. I execute our little navbar hack, table name dot list in capital letters. I'm now on a new tab and now I see groups. Let's go into one. And once again, if you're new to ServiceNow, really pays to do your show XML and take a good look at that table structure. Again, these are all the fields in the group table whether or not they appear on the form. Okay, now you're looking at this group and you see in the bottom corner here, we have roles and group members. And these are many to many relationships because a group can have many roles and a role might have many groups. Just the same, a group might have many members and one person might be a, a member of many, many groups. This is called an M to M relationship. If you're unfamiliar with that relationship, you'll see a video come up in the corner, I uh, highly encourage you to watch that. That will explain M to M tables on ServiceNow and the two different ways you can create them. So we've talked about users and groups. Now the next most obvious table is the membership table. And why might I wanna know the table? Because if I go to member in my navigator bar, I get a short list, but none of them are really what I want. Sure, there's a report down here that shows me group memberships, but what if I just wanna get to the list? Or what if I wanna run this in a script? So the table name for group membership is sys user gr member. And again, follow my advice. I've done this for 15 years and I keep on writing gr members because I wasn't taught right at the start that the table names are singular, not plural. Dot list in all caps because we want a new tab. And there we have our list of all users and all memberships to the groups. There are some cases where maybe via flow designer or via script, you'll want to add members to a group. And when you do that, you're gonna need the table name. And now you know, sys user gr member. 
Real quick, but super important tangent here. The best practice is that you always associate roles to groups. You don't associate roles to users unless somebody's got a gun to your head. Now, the reason we do that is because we assume a role will be applicable to many people. And the group is the object that collects many people. It's also just a lot easier for you because now you can move people in and out of the group and their roles will gain or lose automatically versus trying to remember which individuals got associated a role. So best practices, roles go to groups, users get put in groups to get their roles. And speaking of roles, let's go to our navigator bar and see what it has in store for us. Again, a plethora of options, many of them mean different things. And I would have to know that I want to go to this roles and not the other ones. Or I can just use the table name of the roles table, which is sys user role. You do dot list. And there are all of the roles in the system. Again, if you're a new ServiceNow user, it pays to investigate this a little bit. Go to the roles, do the show XML, but also take a look at the related list because there's some interesting features here. You have contains and contained by. So you can see that there's a hierarchy of roles. And if you give somebody a role that contains roles, you're giving them all the roles that are contained as well. Okay, but we were just talking about roles being assigned to groups, but how would I ever understand which roles have been given to what groups? Easy enough, the table name here is sys group has role dot list. And there are all of the roles and the groups that they have been assigned to. So here we see that the IT routing group has the ITIL agent workspace user, interaction agent, and the SN uni rec routing agent. So if I've given the group a role and then I put a user in the group, shouldn't I expect that that user gets a role? You betcha, and it's stored in its own table. That table is sys user has role. And now I see all the users and all the roles that they have. Now there are some interesting properties on here that you're going to want to pay attention to. Okay. You see this inherited inheritance counts included in role included in role instance. The inherited tells you if the role has come from a group or another role. So anything where that's true means it hasn't been manually assigned and that's a good thing. The inheritance counts tells you from how many places the user got that role. So I might be a member of 15 different groups that have the ITIL role. And if you remove me from one of them, it still doesn't take away my ITIL role because I've inherited it from 14 other locations. Sys user has role, really cool table to go exploring with your show XML in. Also warning, this table is governed by memberships to groups and it is not a place where you wanna play with scripting. You are in dangerous territory if you're trying to script anything on this table. Now the last table doesn't really have anything to do with users or roles or memberships or has roles. This table is called group type. You may have noticed on groups, there's a field called type. If you've ever wondered what this is for, it is for filtering lists of groups on the assigned to field. It's very likely that the set of groups that you can assign an incident to will be different from the set of groups that you can assign a project task to or a resource plan to and many different process areas may have whole different lists of groups. And the primary way ServiceNow does this is by the group type field. The problem is that group type does not feature anywhere in the navigator bar. It is in front of you, unless you know the table name. So your table name is sys user group type dot list. And there we have a list of all the group types that have been used. And for you intrepid ServiceNow application builders, a new button so that you may create your own group types because it's very likely if you have a unique application in ServiceNow, a unique process, that the existing groups are not going to be the ones you want to assign this stuff to. Might be a isolated group of three or four groups. And in that case, you're definitely gonna wanna know how to build a group type now you know how to get to that table. It's sys user group type. And then all you'd have to do is go to name and description. All right, everybody. I really appreciate you guys coming and spending your time with me today. I hope you learned something from this. All the table names are going to be in the description below, so you can copy and paste them into the note-taking tool of your choice. This is my email address. If your company needs Service ServiceNow advisory, or if you need to level up your ServiceNow career, just feel free to reach me at rob at the Thanks for watching.